races. Trouble is no respecter of age. Trouble is no respecter of nationality. Trouble will knock on your door. Do I have any witnesses here that know that trouble will knock on your door? Some, sometimes it's family problems. You have issues within your family. Sometimes it's problems on your job. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, it's problems right in the church. But the psalmist gives us good news and the psalmist reminds us that there is somewhere we can go in times of trouble. He says, he says to us that God is our refuge and strength. See, children of God, you got to know where to go when trouble knocks on your door. See, you can't, you can't turn to... Uh, the, the bottle when trouble comes. All right. All right. You, certain people you can't turn to right. when trouble comes. Right. And some of us are victims because we continue to turn to the wrong folk yeah. when trouble comes. Yeah. I wish I had a few witnesses in here that, that would testify and say there are some folk that you cannot go through. Yeah. Go to when you're going through. Some of us thought that just because a person had on a black suit on first Sunday and just because she had on a white dress on first Sunday and just because they preached a good sermon that you could go to that person. Sometimes you can share with them your heart, share with them what you're going through and then they'll go and tell somebody else. Anybody here has ever gone through that before? But I'm so glad that there is somewhere and someone that you can go to and they will tell you Say Jehovah in that instance, but he says, he says, El, Elohim God. That is the oldest word for God, or the oldest name for God. In essence, the psalmist is saying, as far back as you can trace him, he has been our refuge, and he is our refuge right now. So you got to catch the tense of the psalmist when he pins these particular words. He's not saying that God has been our refuge only. He, he's saying that God right now is our refuge. And what I love about God is that he has not abandoned his post. Because some folk you hang around when trouble comes, they will abandon you. But I'm so glad that God will still be there with you when trouble and trials come your way. He said God is our refuge, a very present help in the time. Oh, I'm starting to feel pretty good because it's good news to know that when trouble comes, uh, that, that God is already there. You don't have to drum up God. You don't have to pray up God. You don't have to turn over your plate and fast up God. God is already there. The record declares that he's everywhere at the same time. He is an omnipresent God. So don't you think for a moment that you have to call God down from heaven and manifest himself in your situation. God is already there. But sometimes our tears tend to get us to not recognize God when he's already there. Ah, y'all know. Maybe work a little bit here, but part ways with Hagar, had to part ways with Hagar, and the Bible says that Hagar cried out to the Lord. She cried out to the Lord, and she was crying, she was crying, but then the word of the Lord came back to her and said, dry your eyes and look up, and you'll see a whale there. <laughs> You see, God didn't just supernaturally and divinely place that well there. It was already there. But because she was crying, she couldn't see the provision that was already there. Look at somebody and say, go ahead and dry your eye, child. If you will just look up and dry your eye, you'll see that God already has in place everything that you need to get through what you are. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. I'll preach to myself in this house right now.
refuge and strength. Yes. He's a very present help. Yes. He's already there. Yes. You need to know that. Yes. He's already there. See, see now, if, if you if you were in trouble, you could call me, but I can only be in one place yeah. at one time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, today, today, Will Charles, Minister Training Charles, um, my wife called me. I picked up one of my sons, and we uh, were getting ready to have lunch. And my son is a trip now. I said, man, did you eat? And my oldest son said, man, did you eat? And uh, I knew what his answer was going to be the other day. He said, no. Because he knew that that question was just set up to take him out to eat. So he said, no, nah, daddy, I'm hungry too. And so we, we, we got in line at Piccadilly. We got in line. See, I saw you earlier. We got in line. But then I received, I received a text from my wife who said that my youngest son was having an asthma attack at the, at the center where he is in the summer camp. Guess what? I wanted to help my son right then. But because I'm limited by time and space and resources, my son had to wait on me 15 minutes to get there. Oh, I feel like dancing in the Holy Ghost because aren't you glad that you don't have to wait on God 15 minutes to help you? He's already He's already there. You need to encourage your neighbor and say he's already there. Some of us need to stop taking all those doggone pills. You got a pill to go to sleep. Lord have mercy, Jesus. You got a pill to put you to sleep. I hear the Holy Ghost speaking to somebody in this house. He said, you need to stop taking all of those pills and know that I am in charge. Yeah, I'm not happy about Rick Scott being the governor right now. I'm happy about him being, being governor's mansion. But he may be in the mansion, but God is on the throne. And in a few more years, if I have to hold a sign myself, we need to give him out of there. Help me, Jesus. But I'm so glad that God is not up for re-election. Is the eternal part yes. 